How are I love I love the backdrop. This will this will, you don't know there's going to be a second half to this podcast and your backdrop fits in with it perfectly. So Oh, awesome, man. You know. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Good. Good, man. How about you? You feeling better? I am I'm doing a lot better. Yep. It Good. was um it's like five five or six weeks of roughness. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. I'm usually I'm usually not a, an ill person. Um, yeah. and this is probably the longest I've ever been ill, ever. And it was horrendous. Yeah. And uh so it's like yeah, you know, like six weeks. Crazy. I'm probably up to about eighty five percent, ninety percent now. Yeah. But a couple of weeks ago I was down at like thirty. It was it was crazy. Wow. So apparently from what the doctor said last week, because I, I don't know about you, but I don't go to the doctors. I'm like, oh, I can push through. Yeah. I'm all right. But yeah. it's our partners that make us go. Right. Because like, you're going to doctor. Oh, I'll be fine. Be fine. You're going. Right. All right. And yeah. I've been twice in the past month, and it was both to just shutting it up, basically going, all right, right. whatever, whatever. <laughs> right. I'll go home. I'll go. I'm fine. And bless her. And it's great. I need somebody like right. that. Otherwise, I would yeah. never go. Right. And last last week I went, and I was I was a lot better than I was, but I wasn't yeah. perfect. And then it was like, you're not right yet. Got to go. It's been five weeks. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'll go. And I sat down with a new doctor and she's like, tell yeah. me what's up. I said, well, I had all these symptoms. I had temperature waves and my muscles were aching and I, I kept like burping and stuff. And I really just didn't want to eat any food whatsoever. Oh, I wasn't, wow, being, man. wasn't being sick at either end, but here's right. all the symptoms. And I kept feel, feeling dizzy and I just wanted to sleep. I went through the whole list and she went, Right. Those symptoms match up to what we've seen in the new COVID variant. And I'm like, whoa, kind of suspected it might have been that because I'm not very ill very often. I'm like, it's got to be something yeah. weird. And once I knew what I, what it seems to have been, I can then deal with the symptoms. So a few yeah. days after that, when like, I got hit by whatever it was, I'm like, oh, that'll be the after effects of the virus symptoms. And it didn't hit me as much. So, yeah, yeah it's been rough, though. It's... Uh, crazy it it really is and it's i you know they talked about it in the beginning like oh this will just be something we'll have to deal with like the flu but mm. it i mean like with me having long covid i don't test positive for covid if i have it i just start feeling amplified uh symptoms and so i i'm not sure that i haven't had it over the last few weeks uh but i did um last saturday because you talk about our lovely ladies uh making sure that we get proper care yeah, yeah and yeah. uh so it was two saturdays ago i i woke up coughing and it wasn't like a normal cough it was um a very violent cough and my head was hurting specifically on this side and michelle was like i think we need to go to urgent care and so we, every saturday morning we go um we're taking horseback riding lessons which nice. is fun and, yeah uh, but yellowstone man, I, <laughs> Uh, exactly, man. <laughs> oh, and I ride a Western saddle. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so uh, Michelle, you know, wanted to be sure that I was, you know, going. And uh, so she said, just let me go uh, without you to horseback riding and then I'll come back and take you. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, it's like we we're discussing, you know, via direct messages. And my dad started feeling bad and so he went down really fast and uh tested positive for covid and then um rebounded really quick versus michelle's dad on the other hand had been feeling bad for weeks and then finally uh same same scenario as you and i uh his you know uh michelle's mom made him go to the doctor and covid so it's still around yeah. and people can say oh it's nothing. No, nah, it can be something. And it's nothing really, for some people. And I think that's the yeah. sneaky thing about COVID is yeah. some people got it and they, oh, I had a bad weekend. I had COVID. And then other people <laughs> get it and go, well, I had a bad summer or spring right. or fall because right. I had COVID. Yeah. And because it's not consistent, it's right. usually the tinfoil hat wearers that get it for the weekend and go, ah, oh, what are you worried about? <laughs> and it's the genuine people who, you know, that get it right. for ages, but I still don't know a hundred percent. That's why I'd, cause I never tested cause we don't really yeah. do tests over here. And I think I don't go out of the house anyway. Right. And I don't want yeah. to, I was just laid up for weeks, but I would get up right. in the morning in the early days yeah. and we will yeah. get onto movies and TV shows in a few minutes. So no, this it's, is, this good, is, man. it's not a viral episode. Uh, <laughs> although hopefully it'll go viral. 
um, yeah, is yeah. I would get up in the morning, go downstairs, make a cup of tea and go, right, now I need to go lie down because I'm exhausted. And I would go yeah. down and, and I would I spent most of the day sleeping and burning my way through all of the mayor of Kingstown. So there is an upside to being really <laughs> sick and not wanting to do everything. But yeah, um, and I would just get this weird feeling of dread in my stomach. And that was like some of yeah. the, whoa, what, what's infected me? Something's got me. I'm, yeah. I'm panicking about something, but I don't know what, because I'm not a panicker. And it was yeah. this weird thing. Um, and it's thankfully it's on its way out now, but yeah. God, it was rough. It was very, yeah. very rough. Yeah. And like yeah. You, we were discussing, I mean, you know, when you are dealing with something week after week after week, and not that you and I are old, but on the other hand, is what the hell's going on? Is yeah. this something that I'm going to just, you know, is this the next phase of life, which isn't cool, you know? I there was, a, there was a couple of times in the past five weeks when I'm like, am I going to go to sleep? And is that it? You know, is this right, the... Right. And it, it's not being morbid. It was just like, whoa. And I remember yeah. there was one time, probably about three weeks ago, when I would wake up in the morning, I'd feel fine. And then all of a sudden, I'd have to tell myself to breathe. And that's really scary when you're like, yeah. okay, breathe in, breathe out. And for about right. 25 minutes, half an hour, I'm like, do I wow. do I need to go to a hospital here? I don't think I yeah. do, but maybe I do. Do I? Well, it's about an hour and a half away, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get there. And <laughs> right. I don't want to tell Annette because she'll panic. I'm sure it'll be fine. And it was like there was two mornings where that happened. And yeah. thankfully, I remembered how to breathe. And, you know, I do it, I do it automatically now. So it's right. great. But <laughs> scary, scary I don't times. Know In my mind, I was picturing Annette picking you up like Sylvester Stallone or Schwarzenegger would have yeah. carried. Like, <laughs> Pretty you know, much. <laughs> Yeah. And you would have been at the hospital in probably 30 minutes or less, right? <laughs> so when we went to the doctors last week, she said, I'm going to come in with you this time. I'm like, okay. Yeah. She said, do you not mind? I'm like, no. I said, just do me a favor. Don't speak for me. Right. But but by all means, if I ask, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Um, because she's like, oh, my God, you've lost like three stone in a week. I'm like, really? I haven't lost three stone. I don't weigh myself very often. I don't know if you do. Right. No. I don't really, I don't care how heavy I am. And right. I have lost weight because I was barely yeah. eating for like two weeks. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't three stone in a week. So it was right. just like, no, 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 don't need none of that. But right. bless her, she made me go to the doctors. The doctor yeah. made me feel better. I'm going back tomorrow because they're like, oh, we'll just book you in for some blood tests while we're at it. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So yeah. that's tomorrow. But I don't expect they'll find anything yeah. in, in that. So Yeah. But you yeah. never know, man. Because, I mean, that's something that... Um, our government tries to encourage us to do annually and uh, blood tests as part of the annual physical. And um, it's good to see how your body's doing, you know, cholesterol wise, good and bad. Oh, my my uh, cholesterol will be high. Oh, Apparently yeah. living on burgers and pizzas and chocolate isn't good for you. Who, <laughs> who knew they should teach this stuff in schools and life and make it available on the internet. Right. But you're happy. That's the, that's I am. The rough, I am right? happy. Yeah. I wasn't happy for the past five weeks. Yeah. But now, now I'm getting happy over the past few days. It's like, right, yeah. now I'm just doing stuff. But, yes. Yeah, yeah. So anybody who is poorly, I hope you get well really fast because it's, yeah. it's yeah. rough. It's, uh, one of the movies that I saw recently was uh, <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine. And it's a running joke in this household that I, I declare that I heal like Wolverine. Although yeah. the older I get, the less I heal like Wolverine. But for the longest time, I mean, you know. Same. Um, knife accident or whatever, man, hurt my back or whatever, and then the next day I'm fine. So, but um, yeah, not, not Michelle likes to remind me, um, you know, that my speed healing needs, uh, I don't know, evidently steroids or something. So, I think mine does. I think my health over the past few weeks has been about as healthy as the box office of Borderlands. It's just, you know, <laughs> has it not been good? I haven't even no. checked, man. It was Dude, a it's a hundred and great. 115 million budget i think it's yeah. probably made let me have a look just to get the up-to-date <laughs> numbers yeah. on how much border let me scroll all the way down to see how much borderlands i'm still scrolling down there john it yeah. has made a worldwide total of 24 million dollars wow and that it is... comes out video on demand in four days they're like get it on no the doubt. thing, yeah, this is Lionsgate. Yeah. Lionsgate are not having a good year, yeah, because but you know, I mean, the, oh, go ahead, <laughs> yeah, because Lionsgate released Borderlands 150 yeah. plus 30 million dollars worth of marketing, probably not yeah. even going to make its market costs. Then they've just released The Crow, 
which oh, isn't yeah isn't doing amazingly because there's right. lots of dickheads online that think this right. film should exist let's review bomb it let's take it out and it's like get a grip <laughs> you probably weren't even around when the first one came out for the love of god uh, so i've got a big right. annoyance with that but that's lion's gate again yeah. and then they had the whole thing with the megapolis trailer this week with the with the credits the false credits which turned out the marketing company had used ai and made up a lot of fake credits and put them for proper oh. names like pauline kale so Lionsgate <laughs> had to pull the trailer for that. So wow. Lionsgate did all the support they get, and they, they've got me. So if you see me retweeting yeah. Lionsgate stuff, you know why. I'm trying to fight okay. for a, a really good <laughs> underdog studio. Right. <laughs> because they've always believed in the underdog. Just like, yeah. I mean, you know, they've taken chances on these, you know, small budget movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, did, I forgot about The Crow. A buddy of mine was saying, uh, was suggesting that we go see it. Um, and then Borderlands, I was, I was concerned that they made the trailer too fun. Like yeah. this is, you know, with Guardians of the Galaxy, I mean, they're not going to make any more. So here's something just as fun. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I, I don't know, it was something about the colors, the action, the music. Um, yeah, I just, I was concerned that they were overselling and maybe yeah. they did. I think they have that, so that's just yeah. a big old bomb, unfortunately. But well, uh, but at least we'll be able to see it without going to the movie theater shortly, right? We we, we will indeed. <laughs> we will indeed. So, what have you watched that's good? Because I know you said your list was getting longer. Mine's yeah. big. I've been trying to catch up on all the films that have come out this year, so I watched a whole bunch of good yeah. ones too. Well, and you had time, right? <laughs> I did after I finished the Mayor of Kingstown, which I might add is a damn good yeah. series. It really is, man. I, I'm kind of wondering if that is the series finale that we watched. Uh, I don't. Of season. I mean, I don't know, but I yeah. don't. I hope. I don't know. I, it, yeah. I remember thinking that, going, if this doesn't come back, is this an okay ending? You go, well, in yeah. some ways it is. Yeah. But I'd still well, quite like to see more. Yeah, because I mean, like. He carries so much weight on his shoulders um, trying to, you know, and he's he's the middle of the road. He is that devil that you know mm -hmm. and need. And, uh, and yeah, Michelle and I really enjoyed it. And, I mean, the cinematography, the sound mix, all that's phenomenal. But I thought storyline-wise yeah. was exceptional, too. But, yeah, I mean, like, there are certain things that are kind of wrapped up. Not mm -hmm. to give anything away because yeah, I yeah. hope everybody will watch it. Um, really good. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, I think that is the only thing that we watched on Paramount Plus. So, yeah, man. I watched all of like, Yellowstone. Yeah, all of Yellowstone. So I'm caught up with that. That's oh, real. good, man. That's real, that, real. Not the spinoffs, the just the main November. Yeah, November, man. There's a lot coming out in November. There is. There's some coming so, out in September, season two of the Tulsa King comes out oh, in yeah. uh, it's, yeah. then that was good if you've seen season one of that but that was yep Excellent, that was good man yeah uh, so yeah so mayor of kingstown like he has a very good heart you know he does yeah so yeah, yeah mayor of kingstown i was a little bit iffy on season one because i'm thinking <laughs> who is this guy who does he really work it really work for anybody right. but yet people go no problem we'll do what you say and i'm like who who is yeah. he what um yeah. and then i think once you get to sort of season two it's like, yeah. and we're up and running now. And then it's this whole, you yeah. know, just carries on right to the end of season three. I really, really enjoyed yeah. that show. Good. Well, and he's a, he's a likable guy. I mean, with all his flaws. So I think he yeah. was, you know, that was a good lead character who is really try. I mean, sacrificing himself, man, really mm -hmm. trying hard to make sure that peace reigns in, in town. And yeah, season three starts off with a bank. And, there it does. Uh, <laughs> but it was really good, man. So you and I talk about streaming services and Apple TV is the winner over the last two months, okay. however long it's been since you and I have uh, uh, visited via podcast. I think man. like a month, to be fair. Yeah. Whoops. Let's see here. Yeah, I can still see you. Maybe you okay. can't see me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a, a friend of mine trying to beep in, and I'll catch up with him uh, later on. But, yeah, man. But that was – you know, I, had, I always forget – and this includes meetings that I have. And um, I always forget to put it on whatever the setting is where I am not disturbed. Like but, airplane yeah. mode or – yeah, or do not disturb I, mode. Maybe they should call it that. Maybe. <laughs> but I always remember right when I'm interrupted. So, um, 
So yes, anyway, Apple. Yeah, man. Why are Apple? Apple? TV, Why are they? Man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Time Bandits, the TV series. See, Excellent. people were going. People were complaining about that because that's what no the internet way. does. The whinge bags. Well, I'm not watching it. Me, 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 me. All right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the movie was good. I want to go back and watch the movie again. So does Michelle. Uh, but it was phenomenal. I mean, Taika Waititi is hilarious. And so um, uh, Lisa Kudrow, her kind of frenetic kind of energy is perfect. And uh, the, it's a zany cast of characters. I know that's been used a lot, but I mean, yeah. it's well worth uh, watching and good, good kind of, you know, wrap up slash cliffhanger. So I hope they have a season two. Mm-hmm. So we've been watching that. Uh, Presumed Innocent, the TV I do, series. I do want to watch that. Yeah. Excellent, man. Excellent. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. I, I did a mashup in my brain between uh, the original uh, Presumed Innocent that had Harrison Ford and um, what was it? Lady of the Lake or whatever, where Harrison Ford kills his wife and you don't what lies out beneath. The yeah. There you go, man. So uh, I did a mashup. Yeah. So I thought he had killed his wife in the lake. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, Michelle thought that was hilarious. Uh, but Excellent, excellent. I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal and the rest of the cast are phenomenal. There's not a weak actor in in the monks, man. And I love TV series like that where um, I remember, I think it was season three of House of Cards, and they had that annoying reporter guy who couldn't act. I think he's gotten better in some of the stuff I've seen him in. But um, that first um, that first year, man, I just – that season – sorry, I'm getting distracted by my dog who is <laughs> – Chewing on uh, Michelle's blanket. So anyway, oh, as long as it's not power cables, you don't want a Christmas yeah. vacation. That <laughs> right, right. And, yeah, that. She doesn't. I tell you what, I'm gonna go grab this. I'll be right back. <laughs> this is John making me. Do, I'm not even gonna edit. I'm just literally gonna talk at an empty chair. I kind of feel a right. bit like is it Clint Eastwood? <laughs> I think that did did a sort of conversation with an empty chair. I am Clint Eastwood. And you're the empty chair. See, I just there did that go. to, sit, to yeah. save me 30 seconds of editing. I'm yeah. good. No, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy. Here, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I think the, the live feel is good, you know? Uh, yeah. But yeah, she is 13 years old. And I, I, this, I every so often she is just like, I'm going to chew on stuff like I'm a puppy. So, um, but anyway, so let's see your presumed innocence and... What else? Sugar? Have you seen that? I have not seen Sugar. No, I don't have Apple TV at the minute. That's one of the ones that I'm waiting for an offer to show up and then I'll jump on it. Oh, yeah. And these are all, um, you can watch the entire series. I mean, right. the season. Yeah. And uh, Sugar is a very unique um, um, kind of a, uh, a kind of a detective, noir detective kind of thing. So, Colin Farrell, very- wasn't it? Like the Colin yeah. Farrell, yeah, yeah. I like yep. he's he's doing well nowadays. Excellent, yeah. Let's see here. What else? Um, the Instigators, the movie with um, Matt Damon, that is hilarious. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. What else? Bad Monkey, Vince Vaughn. Okay. Yep. Very good. And these um, are all on course, Apple. Apple are killing it. Yeah. Dude. Wow. I mean, like you and I, we can remember when Apple was like, "We're a streaming service. We have two TV shows." You know, and <laughs> yeah. then. About the time Ted Lasso was just boom, um, mm-hmm. I think at that point they could grow. Um, so Bad Monkey is funny, uh, and that's dropping every week. Um, Manhunt, which is about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and I don't know how I feel about that, man. That was a very dark, um, I mean, like the whole, there's a lot of, of racism and slavery. And I realize that's a part of the history yeah, yeah. of this country um, and really the world. But um, man, it's not my favorite thing to watch. So we started watching Silo, which I've never seen. Finished. I've seen some of that. And then I sort of yeah. stopped watching it and forgot that I started watching it and <laughs> didn't really <laughs> feel the need to go, oh, yeah. I need to get back into that. I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of good for now. But what's your Season thoughts on two, Silo? November. I, li- I like it. I mean, you know, it felt a bit like, uh, you know, behind one of these apartment doors is going to be Neo and uh, Trinity. Yeah. You know what I mean? It had that kind of vibe. Um, but it, I mean, it's good. I mean, it's, uh, we've enjoyed it and it's not been laborious to watch because no. the Acolyte, which 
has, you know, met its demise. R.I.P. Glorious, man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, you know, with both of us being filmmakers, I, I think there's a part of us that whether we really enjoyed it or not, we're still sad. For, I'm sad for the filmmakers who yeah, so am I. Um, I don't want to see a season two, but I feel bad for these people who honestly thought it was great and mm-hmm. had hopes for their show, man. So, yep. Yeah. But um, so let's see here. What else? Fly Me to the Moon, which is Apple TV. Okay. Um, Chad, Channing Tatum, Tatum Channing. I cannot remember which comes first, but and what? What? Uh, give me a give Scarlett me a pitch. Johansson. Give me a picture on that film because um, I've seen it and I'm like, okay, that's probably what I'm going to watch, but I don't know enough yep. about it to go, oh, that's that film. I don't. 1960s, the race to the moon. We are the United States is competing with uh, Russia, and the U.S. government wants to make sure that we make it first, and so they're going to fake the moon landing just in case we don't make it. And so the so, but I mean that's kept. There's a romantic story, and then there's this hidden thing. I mean it's a comedy, and um, but it, it was it was good. And then in the end, they kind of set it straight. I mean, because you know, I mean, if there's your flat earthers who believe that the moon landing was faked. Um, so this this kind of we were waiting on it to just be ambiguous, but this does define you know, their version of what happened. But it, it was, it was, it was comedic. We enjoyed it. Um, uh, let's see here. I guess that's it for Apple TV. They are so, killed. That's, that's a hefty amount of stuff to watch. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Cause sometimes I'm just like, well, you know, I'm going to cut off Max. Oh wait, you know, House of Dragon. Okay. Yeah. We're going to wait until after House of Dragon. But well, that's um, finished now. House of Dragons finished, so you can. Right. That's not going to be I'm back gonna, for like two years. Yep. And then Crazy. Wednesday, uh, we have uh, Murders in the Building, season whatever we're on, four or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so that saved Hulu, although I think I'm just going to cancel Max and Hulu and do the Disney sign up where I sign up for everything. Yeah, get the bundles. Know, yeah. 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 If that's. I mean, I'm assuming that'll save me money, but I mean, you know, Appar- Verizon, well, apparently, yeah. Um, yeah. apparently, some of the bundles are going to be like thirty dollars a month, whereas yeah. if you were paying for the actual individual streaming platforms, you'd be paying like fifty or sixty. So Which it is, is nice. quite a saving, yeah. apparently. Yeah. But again, I still well, don't want to pay thirty a month to watch yeah. stuff. Like, I'm good. I'm paying like yeah seven. A month at the minute. Yeah. I'm paying it's five 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 ninety nine for one streaming platform, which isn't one of the big yeah. ones. It's a UK one, and I'm yeah. on the, the Disney special offer for like two pounds seventy per month until the end of yeah. September. So I'm just battering all the Disney stuff at the minute, and then yeah. I'll be done with Disney, and then yeah. I'll just go back to this one for <laughs> five ninety nine a month, and then I'll watch right. for a special offer or a discounted rate or something on one of the other ones, and I'll go, yeah. oh, I'm gonna cannibalize all the stuff on amazon or netflix or right. paramount or something like that i'm up to date on paramount yeah. so the next thing i'll sign up for is probably like a month's worth of yellowstone when they've all dropped i'll wait for them yeah. all and i'll just yeah. go in do it for a month and then i'm in and out but yeah i don't blame but, you because it's you know netflix spoils you it's like umbrella academy the final season uh dropped and I, I mean, Michelle and I both enjoyed. I think I probably enjoyed a little bit more. Um, but anyway, but I mean, you know, we had we just paced ourselves, but it was our decision. It's kind of like you're gonna eat the whole pizza, or you're gonna have leftovers for tomorrow. So, um, but the Umbrella Academy uh, was really good. Have you seen the Union? That's also on Netflix. No. No. Um, do you know what I'm talking about, though? Nope. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a clue. It's, it is new, and who's in it? Halle Berry and uh, Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it, Michelle really enjoyed it. So obviously they have an audience. But it to me was riddled with um, continuity errors. Um, kind of like I'm right here talking to you, and then I'm right over here talking. Oh no! You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and then yeah. and then they tried really hard. Where there's so many inside jokes, it's kind of like. Oh yeah, Jake Almond. 
Well, if you don't know who Jake is and yeah. you don't know his Terminator, uh, we all we all know yeah. who Jake is. We know, <laughs> we know. He is a celebrity, which is big, why big, he uses big the big Trump tag. fan that hates the oh, wire. That's him, isn't that's it? Right. Is that is that him? Right, thought so. Right. Yeah, yeah, not a James Cameron fan. Oh, and, no, yeah. no chance. No, not him. No. <laughs> yep. But but anyway, but that so I I mean like when we got to the end, Michelle was like, "Well, that was good," and I was like, "It was good," you know. Was so it? two yes, different definitions of good. But yeah, but I, I just felt like they tried too hard and yep. um, I really wanted to like it, but I just really didn't. It's one I of those really, people. I really yeah. want to like everything yeah. though. And I'm sure you're the same. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I hope it's good. I don't want, oh, I hope yeah. this is terrible. I'm not one of them internet-y people. I hope this sucks. <laughs> right. Why? Why do you hope anything sucks? I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. Crazy. Um, uh, let's see here. I feel interject, man. I feel like I am oversharing I've, all of my. I've been. <laughs> there's always there's always a slight upside to being really ill and not wanting to act like move or breathe or eat anything right. or comb your hair or just change yeah. your t-shirt or something. There's always an upside right. to that. And mine is over the past couple of weeks, I've gone through the entire season one of Twenty Four again. Really? So I yeah. watched all of that. I've seen it like yeah. five times, but I'm like, oh, I'd forgotten about that because yeah. the brain's foggy and stuff. <laughs> uh, I've watched the entire run of Mayor of Kingstown. Yeah. I've watched a whole bunch of films, a whole bunch of documentaries, actually. I'm going to give you some really decent documentary recommendations. Yeah. I, I've got this Blu-ray box set of the Alien movies, so one, two, three, four. Mm. So that's, yeah. that's when it came out. And I'm like, I've never really checked out all the special features on this box set. So let me just, I'm going to do one of these unboxing videos that I do for my YouTube channel. This is the box yeah. set, blah, blah, blah. And when it's special feature filled, I always go online and go, let me just get a big list of everything that's on it. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't think I've seen that documentary. Let me pop it in. And it was a making mm -hmm. of Alien 3 called Wreckage and, Wreckage and um, Rage. It was called hmm. Reddit then. Brain's still foggy sometimes. I'll tell you a funny story about right. that in a minute. Um, <laughs> and it's put it in. I was like, press play. Three hour documentary on Alien 3, the making of. I'm like, this is wow. amazing. I, I've had this box set for like 10 years. Didn't even know this documentary was on there because it was hidden in all these weird sub menus right. and fancy <laughs> click this, click that, click the other. So I'm like, watched it all. And then I put a Facebook update on going, I've just watched this documentary. It's the best thing on Alien 3 I've ever seen because we all know yeah. Alien 3, absolute carnage to make. Fincher's like, I ain't talking about yeah. it anymore. I'm done. And right. showing all this footage of David Fincher, you know, pulling his hair out and getting all wet. And you're like, this is the best documentary I've ever seen. <laughs> I love Alien 3. I will always go to bat for Alien 3. Yeah, and then so I put this post in on. Now, the documentary was produced and directed by a guy called Charles de Lozarica who's done, mm -hmm. he did Dangerous Days, the Blade Runner one. He's done a lot of these like epic making ofs. And he's yeah. on my Facebook friends list. So he went, ah, he commented on it. He went, yeah. check out yeah. the enhancement pods option on this menu somewhere. He went, there's a whole like hour and something of extra features on that. And I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> so I'm like, four and a half hours about the making of Alien 3. This is the best thing ever. Yeah. I wonder what they do for Alien, Aliens and Alien Resurrection. The answer is yeah. another three-hour documentary on each of them and oh, another wow, hour plus of these weird um, enhancement pods. So I spent yeah. like a whole week just what, every time Annette would come in the room, she's like, you still watching that documentary? I'm like, nope, it's another one. <laughs> Amazing. This is all on one Blu-ray, disc number five of this alien anthology set it's wow, like man. why did i never discover this before but it was amazing yeah. so i'm really back at, i haven't seen alien romulus yet uh because i've not no like, but it does look out, really good so really good right. but i've i'm an <laughs> right. expert on the first four alien movies now i know yes. everything about so did you know that in the first alien movie they used kids when they were going to see the pilot um they were kids yes. in and I had no idea, man. I, I yep. caught that somewhere on, uh, I think it was on Instagram today. So, Did you know that yeah. one of the kids is actually Ridley Scott's kid, who's now a director now? I think it's Jake no! Scott. He's I one of the kids. Know. But did you wow. know that some of the tests in Alien 3, they they put a dog inside an alien suit, a whippet. <laughs> and there's, a, there's one of these little enhancement <laughs> pods where the dog's there wearing this like alien thing. Right. It's like... <laughs> Uh, she's just a head popping out the front. 
whilst the filmmaker is talking to this woman going, does the dog mind? No, no, it doesn't mind. Right. So how yeah. do you make it run? Sausages. You yeah. just sort of treat the sausages. And then it shows some footage of this dog legging it up the corridor. <laughs> this whip it wearing a big rib cage and, a, and an alien head. Crazy. The stuff I've learned about the alien movies is bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> really they good. Are, they are amazing. I, I like every one of them, including the what was it, Alien Resurrection? Yeah. And then, um, so did that cover um, the other prequels that they came out with? No, it just because just... the box set uh, was released just after Alien Resurrection, so maybe a few years after Resurrection, but it's before Prometheus and before Covenant gotcha. and all that sort of stuff, but. There's two versions of each film on this box set. There's full-length yeah. commentaries, these crazy making ofs. It's it's easily one of the best box sets I've got. Yeah. Uh, but I love the Alien franchise. Really yeah. do. Really, Dude, really it do. Was, um, I remember I, my parents wouldn't let me go see it in the movie theater. And, um, and so I went over to a friend's house, and his dad let us watch it on HBO. And I thought it was awesome, man. You yeah. know, um, and so, but I mean, that was, uh, you know, not the letterbox edition. So it was pan mm. and scan, but yep. it's, I mean, you know, the big movies like that and Blade Runner, I remember the first time I saw it, but yet it wasn't in the movie theater. No, so, same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, movie wise, <laughs> I'm going to give you some recommendations. I've watched a whole mix. I watched Orca Killer Whale from 1977. Richard <laughs> Harris and Charlotte <laughs> Rampling. Um, have you ever seen that one? <laughs> I have not. You've never man. watched it. So obviously it came no. out like a couple of years after Jaws. Uh, yeah. Studio Canal are doing a reissue of it in 4K. So they'd sent me a screener disc. So I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I love Orca Killer Whale. I used to watch that yeah. film so much. So yeah. the premise of it is that Richard Harris is a, is a fisherman. And yeah. it decides, I'm going to go out and I'm going to capture a real life orca. And I'm going to yeah. sell it to a zoo for 10000 or so, you know, wildlife park for $10,000. So they go sea out world, right? and he fires his harpoon. Yeah, pretty much. He fires his harpoon, but he, he ends up sort of snagging the, the lady orca. Yeah. And they, they bring her on the boat and her baby falls out. Her baby that she was given birth to, boom, falls out. It's like, boom, oh. the, the, the lady orca starts to bleed out and, yeah. and dies. The male orca is in the water going, I'm not happy with this, and sort of goes all John Wick on yeah. Richard Harris and his boat, basically <laughs> stalking him, smashing up right. this entire fishing village to make Richard Harris go out to sea and have a one-on-one -on -one fight with an orca whale. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> really good. The irony in that is that Michelle and I watched a documentary called uh, Blackfish, which is about yeah. orcas at SeaWorld. So that's kind of funny. We were on a similar yeah. page there. And you watch, I mean, I watched this film as a kid in the sort of early 80s, and I'm like, oh, yeah. go on, Richard Harris, get that whale. Ah. Yeah. You watch it as an adult, you're like, come on, whale, get that Richard Harris, because now it's, we're obviously conditioned to go, don't be shooting whales, it's bad. Whereas as kids, we were like, yeah. oh, they're just fish. So, you know, we've, we've learned, we've grown as a species, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> um, funny wise, have you watched Jackpot, John Cena? Yes. That was uh, on my list, man. That was hilarious. That was good. Um, yeah, Michelle and I watched that. I think it was Friday evening, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, hilarious, man. We just a comedy uh, purge. That was, yeah, man. Um, and uh, it, I mean, John Cena and Aquafina. How long did it come? You know, take to pair those names like that? Well, I'd I mean, heard I'd heard like... people talking about Aquafina for for ages. Yeah. This is the first time I've ever seen her name written down on credits. So it comes up yeah. at the beginning, John Cena. And I'm like, what sort of name is that? Aqu yeah. Oh, that's Aquafina. Because right. I've just never seen, I haven't seen <laughs> Crazy Rich Asians or anything like that. So it's like, right. ah, yeah. she was amazing in it. She's she funny. Hilarious, She's really man. funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I enjoyed that. It was good. Like yep. comedy version of The Purge. Yep. And that, that was the only thing that we watched on Prime. So... You've checked that off the list. <laughs> I uh, I introduced Annette to the Karate Kid Part 2. Yeah. Which she loved. She'd never seen it before. I saw that in yeah. theaters, I think, like twice, three times when it came out. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I learned from that, doing a bit of research into it, was the Peter Satira song, Glory of Love. He <laughs> he wrote right. we all We all remember that song. He yeah. wrote that for Rocky Ford. Stallone went, nah. 
So that's how it ended up in Karate Kid 2. It's meant to be a Rocky Four song. Um, wow. But Annette preferred Karate Kid Part 2 to yeah. the first one. She said this is yeah. better than the two. So we're going to watch the third one at some point. We would have yeah. been watching it tonight, but you know I'm I'm doing my bit for charity and talking to you. Uh, <laughs> so we'll probably watch it tomorrow night or something. But we've already seen the next yeah. Karate Kid, right? So we're watching a little bit out of order. But and that yeah. said to me because there's one point where um, Mr Miyagi's challenged to a duel or something in the second one, and that's like, oh, he's not going to die, is he? I'm like, you've seen the fourth film? She went, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was like in Star Wars where we went back and saw the prequels like with uh, my older two kids and you know I mean it doesn't matter what happens we know that Obi-Wan's gonna make it we know that Anakin's gonna make it you know so. yeah <laughs> so watch that uh, we watched Inside Out too. oh did you like that she's good I, yeah. we enjoyed it it's have you seen that one yet no it's, it's on her list. We just hadn't gotten around to it. I don't know if it's better than the first one. It's certainly not worse, but it's yeah. like, is it better than the first one or is it just as good as the first one? I'm not quite sure yet, but we yeah. thoroughly, thoroughly Pixar enjoyed it. has that. a way of kind of keeping keeping things going. You know, it's yeah. like with sequels and um, yeah. Was that uh, John Lasseter still doing that? I, yeah. I think he was put in the cupboard, wasn't he? Because he was like, I think he was like hugging. T- I think he got sort of me too, didn't he? But not not Weinstein I level. I think he was like, I've been inappropriate and I'm like hugging people too much or something. It was something like that. I remember reading that. I'm like, oh, not John Lasseter. Come on. Yeah, and he was really, like, I've been, man. I've been a bit too touchy feely and a bit too patting. And I'm like, I don't know if you should lose your job for that. But no. so he sort of took a, a step to one side. I don't know if he came yeah. back, to be honest. I, wow, man. But I mean, he was not. probably retirement age. I mean, I think I know so. when you, you're doing what you're passionate about, you don't want to retire. But yeah, mm. man. I don't want to retire. I want to get hired. That's what I want to do. Um, <laughs> we we watched Long Legs, the Nicolas Cage. Oh, how was that, man? Weird, but really yeah. good. Annette, Annette and I were sitting watching that a couple of nights ago, and we were both like, yeah. this is the strangest film ever, but we really like it. Uh, Cage <laughs> is just, a, you know, being Nicolas Cage. Right, but Isn't it's he it, Satan or something, or or it, well, it's just uh, a, a he's the serial or... killer called Long Legs, so you know that from the oh, beginning. It's like Nicholas Cage's yeah. Long Legs, and it's Micah Monroe who's an FBI agent. I think she's a bit autistic or she's on the spectrum or something because you could tell by the character <laughs> you like there's something. It never really goes into it, but she looks a bit autistic or something, and she's right. just massively intuitive about there's somebody in that house, something weird's going on, and she's an FBI agent and she's, she gets put onto this try and track down the long leg serial killer case yeah. it's just weird, weird film but really good So, I mean like, Silence of the Lambs versus Long Legs, I mean like is kind of, you know the scene in Silence of the Lambs where Jodie Foster's in the house and there's the whole night vision that yeah. sort of feel that's kind yeah. of long legs yeah so it's that good gotcha, man. weird yeah but but a good film <laughs> um my film of the week is starring alan richson from reacher yeah. and hillary swank from the next karate kid obviously and it's called <laughs> ordinary angels so is it was good then huh really good yeah i have this yeah. thing where that's what we're going to do tonight I'm like, I don't know, what, what do you want to do Generally, I'm like, I want to sleep, but I don't want to get away with it. Um, so we're like, watch a film, okay. And she always asks me what film we're going to watch, and I never, ever tell her. Never. Because right. it's like, you'll find out when we watch it. She always asks, what are we watching? Yeah. you find out. Close your eyes. Put, put, put the thing on. Let's get past the menus. <laughs> put the movie on. And it was Ordinary yeah. Angel. She went, I've never even heard of this. And all yeah. of a sudden, she start pointing at the screen going, I'm like, yes, that's Reacher. And so she'll work out who's in who the person is. She knows <laughs> nothing about the film. Never heard of it before, and yeah. it's it's become our film of the year so far. Wow, man! Well, we'll have to catch that. Mm. Uh, I've almost started a couple times, and then uh, for whatever reason, we we get interrupted or something else. You know, gets it's really played, good. So, yeah. my previous favorite film of the year was If with Ryan Reynolds. Just Dude, that be, was another really good recommendation pipped. on your part. Yeah, be pipped by ordinary angels because. For me, wow, if was a, if was amazing, 
yeah. but it was a Tina Turner thing that got me. I'm like, that's why the film's brilliant because that is genius. Whereas yeah. Ordinary Angels was just consistently, wow, this is really good. And I'm like, that's kind of got to beat If just on those yeah. points. But both really good films. But you yeah. watched If, you liked it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it yep. was right after the, I don't know, one of the last podcasts that we did where you recommended it. And so mm -hmm. I think it was like two days later, we watched it and, um, you know, pizza and just enjoyed it, man. Yep. Yeah. Best use of a <laughs> Tina Turner song so far this year. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, and then Twisters was the final one that I've watched. Oh, what'd you think, man? I liked it. I thought it was fun. Yeah. It's, it's like, it was exactly what it needs to be. Big, big whirlwinds. And I don't know if yeah. a... The cast wasn't as good as obviously Bill Paxton, because how are you yeah. going to beat Bill Paxton? But they had yeah. Bill Paxton's yeah. son in the film, so that was kind of he was the hotel oh, guest. Is. You know, the hotel guest. Oh, this is there's a light here. <laughs> yeah. That was his, uh, right. Bill Paxton's son. So oh, that is uh, funny, man. It, it yeah. was good. I for me, it's I mean, like at, at about an hour mark, I started enjoying it a lot, <laughs> and so I paused it. And Michelle was wondering why I was pausing, you know, a thriller like Twisters. Um, yes. But I wanted to know how long it took me to get into the, you know, like mm. the movie. But I think for me, young unknown kids, and maybe my parents felt this way when they took me to see Star Wars, like, man, this Han Solo and this little kid, you know, uh, Luke Skywalker and, and Princess Leia. But for me, you've got these kids that look like they're 12, and that's not knocking <laughs> yeah, them. We, but, we would mean, say like, that. How old are they? They're old enough to drive. <laughs> the hell? It's a, well, and then uh, it's the, the one girl is obviously a time traveler because it was like, I don't know how old she is, like, you know, in the main timeline. But then she was like, oh, yeah, when I was in seventh grade. And I'm like, you look the same. What in the <laughs> world? <You know? laughs> They're all in their late twenties, though. We were looking up the age. Like, how old are they? Oh, really? oh yeah. Oh, hey, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. I mean, like, I don't want to be that old man who's like, give me somebody I can relate to, you know. Yeah. But I, it was kind of the way I felt. I was like, okay, so this is a horror movie. This is, you know, it's gonna come out. I mean, just you know, with the young cast. So, but yeah, I thought it was good, man. You know, I mean. Yeah, th there were parts that were ridiculous, but yet that's what Twister was. So now Do you don't you think though, because you would have seen the the first film back in the, the theaters. Yeah, and I remember at the like ninety six or whatever that came out in the theaters, you were like, "How on earth did they make these tornadoes? This is insane! Oh my god, it's so loud! This is terrifying!" Yeah. Whereas now right. you watch Twister and you're like, "Ah, oh, it's kind of cool," because we're so <laughs> used to CGI and and all you right. Know, digital yeah. stuff were like eh. it wasn't the special yeah. effects that like wowed us it was just like right the first twist is like wow this is like the best roller coaster ever whereas twisters yeah. you're like this is good but i've done a lot of roller coasters in my life so yeah it's fine what's yeah. next that type of <laughs> feel but it was a good yeah. film i enjoyed it it was man you know when they're looking out the back of the movie theater and you know it's like how long is it going to take for you know it's like Where'd she go? Oh, there she is driving. There she is driving. Oh my gosh, she's you know, and it's almost <laughs> yeah. like at, at the end of the uh, the union, um, there is a boat in the distance that's coming to pick something up, and obviously the boat has been added in post. I get yeah. that. I don't have a problem with that. But the fact that the boat is just like coming in, you got the big waves, and he's it's way in the background. And it's not coming in closer. And they're having all this dialogue. And the boat's... Anyway, <laughs> I was just like, dude, this that's the killer. That's the last straw for me. So. Yep. <laughs> that boat would have been there 15 times over, but, you know... It would have been. Yeah, it's okay. moving the same speed as Speed 2, that boat. <laughs> that was a bad boat movie. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so what else have you watched? Have you... Uh, let's see here. What can you recommend? Um, Okay, so um, before I get to one that I that is that is highly recommended, it is stupid, it's ludicrous, but it's hilarious. Um, I did see T One, the four K edition in wow. the movie theater. Yeah, that was great. Um, I applaud James Cameron for um, doing minimal stuff, and I love George Lucas. I love Star Wars, but man, those special editions where it's just like 
where's the dewback? I don't even understand. <laughs> that lizard doesn't look real. And then the stormtrooper hops off the back of the dewback and just goes, doop. And I'm just like, there's no weight. There's no weight to him. What is no. going on? But anyway, so um, the only thing that I noticed in as far as a change was when Arnold is removing his uh, eye, mm -hmm. um, he added a blade to the exacto because you know if you're watching it um yeah. you see the the thing come up and then so um nothing else looks any more real he did i mean like it is what it is but yeah. um but that was awesome seeing it on the big screen nice stereo mix and then they had a um interview with james cameron and um oh what's her name uh heard um yeah, Gail. who was yeah. this yeah thank you um that was awesome, man. I mean, like we we would have sat through all the credits, but Jake had told me that there was going to be, you know, like an interview afterwards. And so, man, I mean, like I'm watching the credits like I always do. And then uh, the theater does not, you know, light up. And then uh, there's this this dude and he kind of looks familiar, but I'm like, I don't know. Where is this? Is this out in the lobby? And then I put it together. It's like, wow, that's James Cameron. But anyway, they, I mean, like that was really, really cool. So if you have an opportunity, I'm assuming it'll be on the uh, the 4K release, um, but excellent interview, 30 minutes worth. Um, nice. But hearing how complimentary he was and how balanced he and Herd were making this. Um, and I mean, they're exes. I mean, cause yeah, they were, yeah. I think that yeah, was yeah. his first wife. Um, but so much admiration. I wish more people could, um, even even though the relationship is is finished, I wish more people could have that positivity. Like, man, we did some great things together. Mm. Uh, a lot, a lot of that about, comes across in the Aliens documentary as well, because that's only a couple really? of years after Terminator. Oh, you're right, man. Um, yeah. And Gail Ann Hurd and, and Jim Cameron yeah. are on that, being interviewed, and yeah. a lot of it does come across in that yeah, as well. Man. So. It's a good good team up, and a lot of the behind the scenes stuff where you know he, he was talking about the extremely limited budget and the fact that sure. they had to shoot a lot of things. There's a strip evidently in L.A. where there's a lot of car dealerships, and he said he was using all those lights that were on all night long um, to light the scenes, and that <laughs> the uh, camera guy, the DP, couldn't even set an f stop. He tried to use his light meter, and he said there's not enough. And so of course, you know, James Cameron's like to shoot it anyway, man. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, classic man, classic Terminator, um, Deadpool and Wolverine hilarious. Mm -hmm. Michelle and I saw that in 3d, um, first 3d movie. I think I've seen outside of a theme park since avatar. I so didn't even know there was, didn't even know they were still doing 3d and yeah. cinema. Wow. And I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was digitally done, but, yeah. um, have you seen the movie yet? No, not yet. No. Okay. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the opening credits were worth the 3D uh, experience alone. And then everything, I mean, you know, we're not, you know, like Jaws 3 and 3D where it's like, let me throw you this rope, right? That you was know, amazing. Always. I sighed, do me, not, do yeah. not bash what? Jaws 3D. I saw that yeah. three times in theaters as a kid. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. They didn't clean the glasses for in the movie theater where I saw it. So it was just kind of like, if you take your glasses and fog them, and put them mm -hmm. on. And I was like, wow, man. And then you lift them up. Nope, can't, nope, nope. It was um, like, let me pass you a pen. Let me just give you this pen it, here. Man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then here comes Jaws, right? Um, so anybody, anybody anyways, watching so this was, on you anybody good. watching this on YouTube, if you put 3D glasses on, nothing will yeah. work. That wasn't 3D, don't worry about it. Carry on. <laughs> you know what? I um sometimes I just have these creative flights of fancy where and Michelle is always so encouraging. It's like, what are you gonna do this morning? It's a Sunday morning. I think I'm gonna create some anaglyph images, which I'll send them to you if you have a pair of these. I don't, but I will find some. Okay. So yeah, I, they're quite I easy to find. You, I will send you a stack of JPEGs. Um, but uh, I had fun, man, just taking these stereo images um, with my iPhone, just uh, moving my tripod over three inches and uh, and then adjusting them a little bit. Anyway, so that was fun. But nice. uh, but yeah, so I, that was just a random thing. So anyway, Deadpool Wolverine, hilarious. Um, so there is a movie you need to check out. It's a black and white movie. It's called mm -hmm. Hundreds of Beavers. 
I've heard of it. I, I actually got fed up of getting the press releases for this because I kept really? getting them. Like every yeah. week I'd get another one. I'm like, I kind yeah. of already posted one. And they just kept, they really went all out in the marketing for that one. But so I right. haven't seen the film. And I'm sure uh, the budget was probably 50 grand. I mean, like, probably. you know, it's, it's, it's very small, but, um, and there are no live animals in it. It's just people in costumes. Uh, but Fur, furbies, seen... I believe you call them, whatever. Don't yeah. it. Furries or some town, I don't know. <laughs> Hundreds of beavers. Yep. I, I don't know I'm like, what ooh, what sort was... of film is this? Uh, <laughs> That's you know, what Michelle people was up. asking. <laughs> well, no, she was just like, beavers? I don't know that I want to watch <laughs> that. So anyway. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, but I mean, it is hilarious. It is a bit like a video game. When you get to the end, you'll you'll put it all together. But yeah, man. I mean, like, and it was it was like a old school video game, but it's mm -hmm. it's black and white. Uh, there's you know there's there's no dialogue. It's just mm, oh, very animated. Oh but god, it's, is it good? It is it is hilarious, man. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I watched it, admittedly, in two sittings because sometimes Michelle will go to sleep. Um. And I'm not quite there yet, right? And yeah. um, so anyway, I'd, I'd switch it over. But yeah, man, I mean, like I would laugh and I would declare, I'm just going to watch 15 more minutes and then 30 minutes would be invested in it. So, but mm -hmm. um, let's see here. So I think, uh, what else, man? I think we have been over everything that's been on Apple TV. Um I was trying to think if there were any other movies that we have seen recently that were really good um, other than uh, Beavers. I guess we've just been watching a lot of um, Apple you know, TV. TV. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So what have you got next to what's next that you're going to watch? I'm going to watch the Karate Kid 3. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I also um, got sent a 4K Blu-ray screener disc of The Hitcher, the Rutger yeah. Hauer one which comes out oh, a nice. end of September. So I have a nice yeah. fancy little disc. To that watch is quite the magic that. trick that you're showing there. With you flipping the disc and then it just disappears, man. It so. disappears. And that's yeah. my Orca one, just in case you were excited about the Orca. All right. It does disappear, doesn't it? It's like, oh, look. <laughs> and it's back again. Yeah, right. pretty good. So yeah, the Hitcher you I'm going to be. You have an Instagram channel on that alone. <laughs> I should. I do have a Star Wars YouTube channel now. Oh, really? Which is going quite well, actually. I might add. It's, it's, it's one of those channels you just throw a video on it and it's like, boom, look at all them views. Whereas my regular <laughs> channel that this is going out on, right? I'm going to work yeah. at it. I'm going to just. <laughs> crazy. I hear you, man. I did see Rogue One the other, I think it was last week, which I thought was funny. Eric, um, I can't, I don't know why I can't remember. Eric Jones, Jones. the guy who does yeah. the podcast with uh, Jake, um, he tweeted about it. Or X'd it? I don't know. But anyway, you get I think what we I'm still see. I think we still see tweet. So you can tweet on X. I got you, man. Uh, yeah. That just sounds like you're betraying. But anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was funny that he had seen it and posted about it. And yeah, man, it's still a really good movie. Holds up well. And um, i trying to think. But as far as what are we watching next, man? Uh, I think we have a bad monkey coming out this week. But... Mm -hmm. I don't know that we have any um, other than the the ordinary angels. Now I want to see that. It's so really, it's really that'll good. probably yeah, man. True but, story yeah, as well, which just oh man, really, yeah. really, I can't, I can't really sort of praise that film high enough, and I'm not going to say why yeah. because it, you know you're going to watch it, so you'll discover it anyway. Right. But yeah, I yeah. really. So probably next time you like watch the hey, that <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but we, we as, really, we really as, enjoyed it. As long as Alan Ripson doesn't step out of the shadows and a light comes down from above and he says, I'm he's, an angel. He's really good in it. And it was like, <laughs> so he's the main guy and Hilary Swank, yeah. they're the two main stars right. in this. And Hilary Swank's yeah. really, really good in it. And I was thinking, yeah. she's definitely better than Alan Ripson in this, in this role in this film. <laughs> and then you get to certain scenes in it and you go... Yeah. Do you know what? I think Rich and Rich might have nailed it on that scene. So they're they're yeah. both really good. But no, he doesn't. Oh, that's awesome. Man. He doesn't punch anybody through a wall or, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> stroll into a cafe and throw people through windows. It's a very different role for him, but it's really good. Really good yeah. film. Yeah. So I'm hey, going to. So go oh, oh, carry on. Go 
No, you first, because then I'm going to segue them. Going back to Deadpool Wolverine, how are you avoiding all the spoilers? I mean, I appreciate the YouTubers um, on their thumbnails, their clickbait. They say, you know, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine spoilers, so you don't click on it. But yeah. it took Not me many three do that, weekends. Though. It yeah. took me th- no, yeah, man. It took me three weekends to see it, and I was almost spoiled over and over. And then some of the cameos and some of the other things, yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Um, and I just did not want to know. So there was a lot of really fun surprises um, in there. So, yeah, man, I was I just think, wondering, how are, you, how are you avoiding all that? So the film comes out and then, you know, you, you, you avoid it and you go, OK, I'm not going to read anything. I have no interest in right. reading any reviews of Deadpool, v, Deadpool and Wolverine right. because I've not seen the film yet. So why do I care what somebody else thinks of a film I've not yet watched? Right. So I don't, I don't click on any of them. YouTube yeah. stuff, don't bother with any. Oh, let me just see, because I've not watched it yet, so I'm good. Yeah. I just avoid it. Yeah. If you can get over the first two weeks of a film coming out, yeah. there's not really that many people going, hey, look, Deadpool spoilers, because yeah. the, the, the clickbaiters are onto something else now. They're onto right. bitching about the crow or whatever. But then you will get <laughs> you will get the odd one. It's like, hey, look, Wesley Snipes, <laughs> Blade. Right. You're like, thanks for that. Yep. But it doesn't yep. ruin my enjoyment of it. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of it's just calmed down now. So it's there's certain yeah. franchises that I'm like, don't spoil editing. Right. Yeah. Marvel's not really one of them. I'm not like, oh damn you, so and so's in it, and there's a there's a <laughs> Deadpool dog in it that licks his face, and I don't even know what that yeah. is, but I've seen that on clips. Uh, yeah. You just gotta just ride out the time until something else comes out that yeah. everyone bitches and moans about, which is the Crow or Borderlands or. <laughs> Or something. So, uh, <laughs> I had forgotten I about both of those, man. They were not necessarily high on my list. Um, although, I mean, I'll, I'll watch them whenever I can watch yeah. them digitally. But um, yeah, man, that was uh, seemed like, man, there was something. Uh, oh, um, Ryan Airy on Screen Crush. I thought it was funny that he put out a video within the last two weeks talking about the ending of Lost. And I'm just <laughs> like, wow, man, yeah. that's a throwback. Wow. But you'll still get people who comment in that video going, spoilers. It's like, for the love. Do you know, it's, it's, it's not the internet's job to protect me from having something spoiled. It isn't. It isn't really. Right. I mean, if somebody yeah. does it weekend one, that's like being a bit of a dick, basically, going, come on, right. seriously. Not everybody rushed out to watch on day one. But if right. after like a week or two, I've yeah. not been to see this really big film, it's not yeah. up to like, you and Jake to not no don't tweet about spoilers for films that you've seen because I might right. not. It's not, and a lot of people get really yeah. mad. They're like spoilers. It's been out two right. three weeks. For the, I'd go watch it. Stay right. off the internet. Just don't worry about and it. But. I mean, it's not like an M Night movie where it's just like, oh hey, no, it's not in the past. It's in the present. They're in the middle of the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's disappointing. Oh yeah, Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So thanks. I mean, it, it's there's nothing deep like that, man. It's just Deadpool and no. Wolverine, and yeah. But just it, the cameos, it's, isn't it's it? And I'm I'm gonna funny. watch Deadpool oh and Wolverine, and Blade's yep. gonna be there, and I'm like, yay, it's Wesley, he's back. And I'm still yeah. gonna I'm still gonna enjoy it because you get to see Wesley Snipes right. come back again without a tax bill, yeah. which is quite nice. <laughs> so there's that. Yep. But yeah, I just yeah. I, over the past few weeks, I've spent less time on the internet than previous, and I'm all right. I'm good for it. It's good. It's Dude, good. you know, it's there. Who was it? Oh, I was talking to my uh, friend Nicola, Dr. Felton from mm-hmm. 18 Degrees Below Horizon. And anyway, and she was like, Oh, did you see that great piece of artwork that I posted on Facebook? I rarely go on Facebook. And one of the few reasons why I go on, on X is because that's primarily how you and I correspond. Yeah. Um, and then I'll post whatever geeky nerd stuff I'm creating, uh, you know, the props and stuff on Instagram, but mm-hmm. I don't necessarily sit there and flip through Instagram, man. I am just, yeah. and I'm not anti-social media. I just, I don't have a place for it anymore, really. No. So, yeah. you know, I do, I do these podcasts and they go out automatically to the feeds and, and I'll go on social media a little bit, but I'm not, whereas I used to be on it all the time right you know because and, and i quite like that yeah because if you're like me i think at some point i really believe that i would be 
uh, you know, like waxing cinematic would be huge if I just interact with enough people. Um, as a director, if I just interact and show that I'm on all these different sets and doing these different movies, um, I'll, my career will gain traction and stuff. And I'm not saying that social media didn't help, but I mean, there's a gazillion of me's out there. There's a gazillion yeah. movies out there. And, um, and so when I finally let that go, where I didn't feel like I had to show the world everything I was doing. Um, then man, you have so much extra time. And, um, so anyway, yeah, man. So I used, I'm, I'm I used to there. try and, I used to try and watch every film I could and review every film I could. Cause then people would go, he's amazing. Let's, let's hire him right. and let's throw money at his house. <laughs> right. And I never worked, you know, I got, right. I got to hang yeah. out with cool people and stuff, but it's like, now I just watch what I choose to watch and there's no real rush schedule. Um, yeah, and I quite like that. I'm trying to certainly over the past few weeks, I've I've scaled back and just done the bare minimum. Yeah. I've slept, I've made cups of tea, I've eaten some biscuits, and I've slept again. <laughs> and then I've gone online right. and I've you know done an article or two, but kind of I'm getting ready to hibernate for the winter. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, you no. know, it's um the weather here last week was uh, in the nights it, it would get down to, you know, mid fifties. And then during the day it was low seventies. So mm. it really felt like fall, the humidity dropped and we were leaving the windows open. And that was my focus, man. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm working on some props, but I mean, you know, just being able to sit down with Michelle at the table and, we have dinner and then we play gin rummy or something, you know, and yeah. man, it's just nice instead of always, you know, being, uh, you know, not looking at each other and watching, yeah. you know, something on TV, which is still fun, man. But I, I agree with you when you can do everything casually, then I think you enjoy it more. Yeah, definitely. 